John Lee once said, the path of the Dharma is looking inside. When you look outside, it's the world. The mind that's concerned with things outside, that's part of the world as well. Once when you look inside, that's when there's Dharma. So this is where our practice focuses. Notice where the, the path, is, path lies. It lies in our thoughts, our words, our deeds. Generosity may be an act of giving things to other people, but it's primarily a development of a quality of the mind. Same with the precepts. They govern our interactions with other people, but their primary purpose is training the, our thoughts, words, and our deeds. Again, focusing in on our mind, the attentions that underlie our actions. At the same time, developing qualities of mindfulness and alertness as we maintain our precepts. And of course, meditation, that's directly looking in at your own mind. Other things may come up, thoughts about this person, that person, this thing, that thing, this should be that way, that should be this way. That's not the Dharma. That's the world. You've got to put those things aside. Because there's a lot of unfinished business inside. This is why we have to look inside. We know someday we're going to have to face aging, illness, and death, as the, the chant just said right now. We're going to have to face separation. All of these things are painful. And yet they're a normal part of life. That chant we have, aging is unavoidable. We're subject to aging, illness, and death. The Thai translation says aging is normal. Illness is normal. Death is normal. We have to ask ourselves often, again and again, are you, are you ready for these things when they happen? Are you prepared? And the answer is almost always no. But we spend our time worrying about this, worrying about that, creating this issue, creating that issue, as if we didn't already have enough issues. The mind is a constant creator of issues, if it's not trained. And then when the time comes, we realize that the big issues in our life have gone been neglected. And we realize how much time we've wasted. When the Buddha talks about being uncomplacent, when he talks about being heedful, this is what he's talking about. There is a lot of unfinished business in our own minds that's got to be taken care of. And then yet we drop it and go off and get ourselves involved in other things playing around as if we had a lot of time, all the time in the world. It's people who are wise who turn around and look inside and realize this is where the important work lies, right inside here. That's not just simply an issue of okay, doing a little internal work so you're okay and then you go out and play around some more. It's not just a matter of coping. You want to get to the point where you don't have to cope, where you can sort of work through these issues until they're totally resolved. The Buddha said that's possible. Many of us don't think that's possible, which is why we don't get the most benefit out of our meditation. The Buddha says you can put an end to aging and death if you really look carefully inside. Because the seeds of these things lie in our minds, in our hearts, and they can be taken out. So there's an end to all this suffering. So make sure that your gaze is focused inside all the time. This is the main work we have here, looking inward. As for outside things, that's because we have a body, we have to live in the world. So we take care of our, our requisites. And we live with, with other people, so we have to take notice of other people. But what do we take notice of? Look at their good habits, look at their bad habits. For what purpose? We'll see what they reflect about ourselves. When we do some, see someone else doing something that's careless, something that's thoughtless, something that's irresponsible, ask yourself, okay, do I act that way? Am I careless? Am I thoughtless? Am I irresponsible in my actions? You see the harm that's done 
what other people act in that way. You have to look back and see what kind of harm you're doing when you act in that way as well. As for their good qualities, look at those, again, as a mirror for yourself. Do I have those good qualities in myself yet? If not, what can these people teach me? What can I learn from them so that I can master their skills as well? But again, when you look outside, it's meant to be as a mirror to reflect back in, to see what's going on in your mind. When you look at your own actions, again, reflect back in to the intention that lies behind them. This is one area that we really don't like to look at many times, because many times our intentions are mixed. And this is where our, our largest sphere of ignorance lies. We often think of ignorance simply as kind of a lack of knowing, but many times it's an active ignoring, an active covering up. The mind hides things from itself, and then it doesn't want to look at the fact that it's hidden things. This is why we have such trouble looking inside. Almost every time we look inside, it bounces back out. This person, you're angry at that person. You want to tell this person what to do. You want to tell that person what to do. Why? Because you don't want to look at what you're doing, why you're doing it. One of the reasons we develop concentration is to create a sense of well-being in the mind so that it'll start admitting the places where it's been lying to itself. The analogy is with someone who's hungry. If you try to talk to a hungry or tired person about what's wrong with them, they don't want to listen. But if you can talk while they're rested, well-fed, they're much more likely to listen. It's the same with your own mind. If you want to look into the mind, you have to create a sense of well-being first before you can start taking things apart and pointing this out and pointing that out and admitting to yourself the things that you've been going for so long not admitting. So this is why we work on creating this sense of well-being, staying with the breath. learning how to keep the mind in a basic good mood. Not because the good mood is an end in and of itself, it's you use it as a tool. So often we treat pleasure and pain as ends in themselves, especially the pleasure as an end in and of itself. We get a pleasant feeling and, okay, that's it. We just want to hold on to that pleasure. The Buddha's discovery was that you can take pleasure and pain and use them as tools. The pleasure is used to create this sense of well-being in the mind, this sense of stability. So we can really start looking inward in a way that's steady, in a way that's calm, dispassionate, and doesn't let itself get waylaid by the tricks of the mind. You use pain as a tool as well. Another thing you're going to find as you look inside in the present moment is both physical and mental pain. And there's lots of lessons to be learned from it. And these are things we tend to avoid, things we tend to run from. But we have to turn around and look directly at them. So we can learn the lessons they have to offer. Because it's not just the pain, there's lots of other stuff clustered around the pain. All those mental acts, all those decisions, we, subconscious decisions we make as soon as a pain arises. If you're patient and still enough, you can begin to see them and take them apart and say, oh, this is what the mind does. This is how the mind creates unnecessary suffering for itself. When you really see and understand that, okay, then you let it go. You're freed from those habits. So we learn to take pleasure and pain as our tools, use them to create the proper frame of mind for looking inside so the mind can really understand itself, give, give our inner gaze the proper focus. Because until this particular issue is taken care of, it's, it's just going to linger in there and keep coming back at you again and again and again. No matter how much we try to try it, de deny it, no matter how much we try to run away from it, it's always going to be there. 
and that time come, come times when you can't run away. So you want to have your tools ready. You want to have your skills ready. It's when the really big pains come in life, the big sufferings come in life. Okay, you've got the tools you need to handle them. And when you can handle them properly, you realize, okay, the time spent looking inward like this is very well spent. It's the most valuable part of your life. The time spent looking outside, creating all kinds of outside issues, that's just a burden. That's just an unnecessary creation of a lot of confusion, a lot of suffering, both for yourself and for people around you. So you have to ask yourself, are you going to spend your time burdening yourself more and more, or are you going to spend your time learning to lessen the burdens, lighten the burdens, looking out for that habit of the mind to carry things around and create issues where they really don't have to exist? The Buddha talks about papancha, the mind's ability to complicate things. That's one of our main problems in the practice. And this dharma, he said, is for people who want to go for non-complication. Instead of creating issues, they want to resolve the issues. Instead of getting entangled, they want to get disentangled. Instead of carrying on the battles that people carry on with among themselves, they want to bring them to an end. Because you realize they lead nowhere. They just create unnecessary burdens, unnecessary stress and suffering. It's the habit that wants to get out of those battles, get out of those complications. Okay, That's the habit, the Buddha said. That's the mark of a great person. That's the mark of someone who's really ready for the Dharma. The Dharma is for a person like that, he said. So we get the mind to settle down, give it this sense of well-being, and try to create the habits that we need so that we really are ready to benefit from the Dharma, ready to take it inside. One of the traditional meanings of the word open I go that we chant day in, day out, is that the Dharma is meant to be taken in. It's meant to be applied inside the mind. And that just worn around as a surface effect. But it's something that really does dig deep in and make basic changes in the way we manage our minds, the way we relate to ourselves. From this ability to relate to ourselves in the way that it also changes the way we relate to others. So there's less and less harm going on. So the big problems lie in here. The Buddha gives us the tools for dealing with them. We're fortunate that we have this opportunity to practice. It's not everybody who gets to spend whole days just looking at their own minds. So take, take the opportunity while you have it and make the most of it.